Dead. 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 So for almost a year now, I've been hearing such good things about a mouse called the Myonix Caster. And when I reached out and asked for a review sample, they were happy to oblige and send me over one. So today I'm gonna to be going to an in-depth look into this mouse and seeing if it really is king of the hill. As soon as I got it in, it was packaged really well and upon taking the mouse out, it felt of really high quality. It had a rubberized side grip there and the plastic was really strong, but also having a soft rubberized feel for it. Even if you had sweaty hands, you wouldn't slip using this mouse in the dead heat of summer. Now moving straight into the mouse's hardware itself, it features armor on switches and also a scroll wheel that in practice felt in between smooth and also clicky. I honestly prefer a very strong clicky scroll wheel. This was sort of like mediocre for me, but moving into the buttons, those armor on switches are some of the best you can get in the business, no doubt about that. Now moving on to the sensor itself, it features an ADNS 3310 sensor there, which provides great performance out of the box and I will keep a keynote on out of the box. When I played with this mouse at 1080p, the performance was really good. I didn't have to change any of the settings, I didn't have to use any of the software, though when I took this mouse up to 4K, I noticed it started skipping and it didn't matter which mouse pad I used, it found it that it just had a hard time playing games at 4K. I just couldn't get this mouse to perform the way I wanted it to. And any software settings I tweaked, just didn't help the fact that it just had this weird sense of skipping at 4K. I don't know what that was exactly, but for what it's worth, 1080p gaming was absolutely awesome on this mouse. Now moving on into ergonomics, and this is easily in my opinion the most important part of a gaming mouse nowadays. The Minus Caster weighs in at 93 grams with that weight distribution being more at the rear of the mouse. Me personally, I prefer my weight distribution in the center of the mouse, hence why I use a Razer Taipan and the G3 as my daily driving mouses, depending on the computer I'm using. Also with that said, I didn't find it a, a great thing that this mouse didn't include adjustable weights, especially for a mouse that comes in at $70, I have to critique that straight away. Though as to the actual feel and the control of this mouse, I found myself not really being a big fan of it. I found it was more of a miss for me since it was somewhere in between a fingertip and a palm gripping type mouse. I just couldn't get the hang of it even after a few weeks of using it. And I kept finding myself just wanting to go back to that fingertip grip type mouse where I've got the Razer Taipan and also the Logitech G3, especially for editing videos when I've got to flick around a lot and do a lot of things at once. In games though, I found this mouse to be pretty good, especially for FPS games where you you want that sort of in-between feel between a palm grip and a fingertip grip, then this will provide you with a nice feel. Though keep in mind my hands are about 20 centimeters long from the middle finger here to the bottom of my wrist, so I would have what would be considered larger hands if that's any indication to go by, so I think that this mouse would be more comfortable if you had smaller or medium sized hands and you preferred a palm grip type mouse. Now moving on into the software and customization of this mouse is actually a really good thing. The software is very easy to use. It's also very in-depth and detailed. You can download it on their website and it also includes an application to update the firmware. Now this software comes with an analyzing tool, which in practice I found didn't work that well at all. Uh, I felt it just more or less tested the actual gliding of the surface rather than the actual accuracy. As my Razer Goliathus, I know in the past it's a very accurate mouse mat. However, when I compared that to a 3M mouse, which glides really well, that scored much higher than my Razer Goliath's mouse pad. The lift off distance setting, I found this didn't make a difference in practice. I couldn't, if I put it on the lowest setting, it didn't make a difference as opposed to if I put it on the highest setting. So I was kind of confused a little bit there too. Then moving on into the DPI incrementations there, this mouse can go all the way up to 10,000 DPI with 50 different steps there. And you can also program three different levels there within one profile. And you've also got five profiles to choose from. And on top of that, you can also configure the LED lighting on this mouse to 16.8 million different colors. And you can choose between different effects there like pulsating, breathing, and just solid colors or no effect at all. So in conclusion, what can I say about the Myonix Caster? Well, I think it hits a lot of nails on the head, but it also doesn't hit a lot of my other nails on the head. I think for coming in at $70, they should have maybe gone less with the boxing and also the RGB LED lighting and put something like adjustable weights in this mouse. I think it really could have benefited from that. And also I found the software adjustments, even though they looked good on the surface, I found when I started making all these changes, they didn't really make a difference for me. And actually they made performance worse, especially when I was gaming at 4K. I don't know what it is, but this mouse at 4K, I just could not use it. And I really got tired of it quickly, no matter what I did with the settings. So then maybe that's some feedback from Myonix if they wanna improve this in a further or future implementation of either their firmware or a different model. 
Though with the negative out of the way, let's move on now to the positive. This mouse out of the box at 1080p gaming performed extremely well. I was loving what this thing was doing, especially when I was playing some multiplayer games and trying to get some frags. At 1080p, it was a great experience. Though again, that shape, is it for you? That would be something I would recommend if you can try out the Myonis, if your friends got one or whatnot, if you can go down the store and try one, I'd recommend to try it first before you buy because the shape in my opinion is hit or miss. Some people are gonna love it. I just didn't really like it since I'm a predominant fingertip gripper with a large hand. So your mileage may vary though. I know a lot of other YouTubers like Totally Silence for instance and Joker Productions, they absolutely love the Myonis caster. Though for me, it was kind of a miss and especially at $70, I thought Myonis could have done a few things better to make this the best mouse out there. So anyway guys, that's about it from me. If you have any questions or comments about the Minus Castle, then be sure to drop a comment in the comments section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And also, if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up and I'll catch you in the next tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye. Let's talk about mice, baby. Let's talk about my Onyx and me. Let's talk about all the good things, all the bad things. All the mediocre things, all the slightly below average things, all the slightly above average things, all the slightly negative, all the slightly positive, all the slightly in between, all the slightly biased, all the slightly unbiased. Let's talk about mice. Sometimes the little fish gets eaten by the big fish. Like in the past, I used to, me and my friends, we used to play Age of Empires and you used to click the mouse and you used to see like who could click it faster. Like, do you ever do that with your friends? That's real. I wonder if it's cowboy proof. Yeah.